<laughs> Carrie, your shirt is so cute. Oh, thank you. Um, one day I'm going to come to Idaho and raid your closet. I like, like a little protection. I'm the Lord Davis. There we go. Well, I I don't wear everything I should wear because I'm like a comfy person. So every day I wake up, I'm like, oh, I throw on that sweatshirt. And then I'm like, here, you have all these shirts. Like, why don't you just wear them? So I'm trying. <laughs> but we always end up matching a little bit. Like you and I are complimentary again today. And that happens like almost every single day. And we don't even share notes, which I love. That's so fun. All right. So we are live streamed. And well, it doesn't say we're live streamed, does it? Uh, no, but I thought we were, I thought I saw a notification, but I guess not. It looks like it ended. So give me one more minute. Let me just see why we're going to try one more time and then we'll get started. Awesome. You must have muted us off. (laughs) You were like, oh, it's it's just Carrie again, guys. (laughs) It's just me. (laughs) It's just Carrie again. Hey everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Um, so Carrie, Olivia, and I are going to have a conversation with all of you So we really want you to participate because this is a conversation. Um, We're going to be talking about the top priorities that admin should be focused on for their agents and teams in the fourth quarter. And so with that being said, I, of course, have brought, being an admin, I've come prepared, you guys, with the top priorities. But I also want to hear what's working for you if you do have an admin or if you don't have an admin and you're thinking about making and hi- making a hire, this is the place where we can have that conversation because we want to show you how leverage can not just grow you and your business, but it, it helps you go from being an agent to an entrepreneur to an actual business owner, having the right leverage in place. Um, and then additionally, I said, you know, I want to hear what you guys have to say, what's working for you, what's not working. We really want to focus on the things that are working, but if there's something that isn't, we want to hear that too. Um, So yeah. Did we get it live streamed, Carrie? I think it's working now. Oh, there it is. It's live streamed. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So yesterday, um, if any of you joined us, we had an amazingly powerful conversation about how the ROI of admin leadership and specifically around what it looks like to have a powerful admin who is a partner to you. They're not above you. They're not below you. They are a partner. They're force multiplying you and what it looks like when they do own their role and what it looks like if they're in coaching or if they're surrounded by a community of like-minded leaders, because they should be leading you as the agent, just as much as you're leading them. And I know that that sounds a little scary because leadership can be scary, but when you're partnered with the right person, it comes naturally. So let's dive in to how many people on here have an admin. Candy, Joel, do you have an admin? Are you looking to hire an admin? Or a virtual assistant. Or a VA. I'll be completely honest. I'm not exactly sure what they do. So I would love to learn more so I can know, but I'm thinking I want to, I just don't know what they do. Awesome. Yeah. Love that. You guys, Olivia, she's to my, where does this, my right (laughs) um, or on the screen, Olivia is joining us today too. Um, She is working here at EXP. Her and I are partnered together. We do admin coaching and training, not just coaching guys, training. Um, for admin to help them to fully own their role, like I said. And Olivia's here. She's with the Jim Black Group. So welcome, Olivia. She's going to be joining us today. Awesome. Okay, so let's dive in to, let me pull up my notes. I have them here. I have them too. Awesome. Okay. I just have like so many screens open, you guys. Okay, so the first thing that your admin can do and I'm going to I'm going to make this generalized because I realize that not all admin are licensed in real estate. So even if your admin is not licensed, we're going to be talking about things that they should be doing for you in the fourth quarter to prepare you for a very solid foundation for the new year. OK, so the very first thing that they should be doing is helping you with lead generation. So. 
by helping you with lead generation, what am I talking about? I'm not talking about if they're not licensed, they can't physically make the phone calls for you. And even if they are licensed, they should not be making those calls for you. That is something that you need to be doing, lead generation. But what they could be doing to help you with this is ensuring that you have scripts prepared, purposeful and intelligent and articulate scripts to help you reach out to your clients over the next couple of months. Additionally, what they should be doing is ensuring that all follow-up is set in place in your CRM. So they should be helping you to scrub your CRM. We'll get into that a little bit later. Um, and then if you currently have leads coming in, a lot of us are paying for leads. If you're using KV Core, um, Privity, um, anything that's like uh, YLOPO, anything that you're paying for, Google ads, Facebook, Instagram leads, whatever that looks like for you, do you have systems and processes in place to ensure that every single lead that comes through is being communicated with within the first five to 10 minutes? Can that be your admin? And if your admin based on your state regulations is not allowed to speak to that lead, do you have systems in place to make sure that your admin is getting that lead to you? Or can they schedule an appointment for you? What does that look like? What if you had your admin vet the lead for you? Ask those powerful LP mama questions and get it scheduled for you on your calendar. So all you had to do was reach out and in the notes section of your calendar, you could see what the location was, what their motivation is. Do they currently have a mortgage or are they gonna pay cash? Are they already working with an agent? Um, what is their price point? right? What if all of those questions were already answered and all you had to do was make the phone call because they've already warmed up the lead for you? Could you imagine that type of leverage? And they're working on your behalf. So I'm answering the call. Hey, hey, Olivia, this is Haley uh, Labosco. I'm calling on behalf of Joel over here at EXP. Hey, I saw that um, you were inquiring about 123 Main Street. Is there any questions that I could ask or that I could answer for you today? And then we dive into the LP mama questions. I scheduled the appointment. I get it on the calendar. I reach out to Joel. Hey, Joel, wanted to let you know that I scheduled Olivia for you. Um, you'll notice that's on your calendar for later this afternoon. Do you have any questions for me? Perfect. Joel comes in. He calls him at the time. And he's like, hey, I heard you talk to Haley. She already asked you all these questions. Now we're building rapport. Now we're building trust and confidence. That is an ideal lead generation strategy for your admin. Olivia, would you add anything to that? Yeah, um, I think there's, I think that's a really great point that, you know, there is, if they're not licensed, right, there's only so many things they can have, but they can absolutely ask those intake questions. One of the benefits that that has is that now they've connected with this person. So as you turn around and go into the process, you get this person under agreement and now they're gonna be working with this admin during the transaction. They've already established some connection there. Um, they've already got some trust that there's a team and there's communication. Um, and just another thing just to keep in mind as we go through all of these is that when we say like, you know, the admin, this isn't necessarily one person. And when we say that admin owns it, it doesn't mean they do it. So mm -hmm. maybe the system for people hearing back quickly is that there is a great follow-up system in your CRM and your admin owns making sure that that is in place and is happening. So sometimes like, you know, we'll kind of look at, you know, an admin is, you know, this person is responsible for, and there's this list and it seems like an impossible list. And if they're trying to do everything, depending on your size and your volume, it may be, it may not be if you're small, you're starting out, you know, you're just at that spot. But remember that having them be responsible for it doesn't mean that they're necessarily doing it. It just means that they own it. So you talk to them about what you want it to look like and they make it happen. They may, they may or may not be the who, but they right. are the ones that decide the who. Right. And you could also have somebody like an ISA, or maybe you have people designated on your team. A lot of times it can be a newer agent who wants the experience 
to uh, just communicate with people, right? Because if they're new to real estate and they need and are eager to have these conversations, but they're a little nervous, this is a perfect role for them to help them, um, like I said, just gain the experience and having them in, do all of the intake for any incoming calls, including sign call leads that you're paying for. Um, it could even be your sphere of influence that an ISA or a new person that you designate on your team could be calling on your behalf. So that's another point, Olivia, as I want to talk about, we all know that agents should be lead generating, ideally every single day. If you have a database of several hundred people, you could very easily be contacting five to 10 to 15 people every single day making those phone calls. If your goal is to touch five people a day, if you are lead generating for two hours, it's easy to make those phone calls and touch five people. And those phone calls, they don't need to be anything more than just, hey, Olivia, it's Haley. I wanted to check in. I'm, I'm making my quarterly call today. Wanted to check in and see how I can remain a professional resource for you. I know that this is a changing market. Um, do you have any questions or are there any, is there anything that I could answer for you at this time? They don't need to be so scripted that you get like lost in a script, right? But how can admins, Olivia, and Carrie chime in too from your experience, how can admins help hold their agents accountable to doing the lead generation? Yeah. So two things I think is remember your database, if you do a good job of sending out things, announcing your team members, announcing your operations partner to your database, they become familiar with this person's name at least. And having that person call and invite to your client events or, you know, to get a, um, an address so you can send a holiday gift, like you should be maximizing your operations person. If to, to, to Olivia's point, if they aren't too busy with transactions. If they've got time to be a little bit more well-rounded because you're growing your business and they can have their hands in multiple things. If you've got a talented person that gives them variety and it brings a lot of value. So a lot of the follow-up, the inviting to events, or if you're doing a food drive or those things, those calls and texts and or emails via a database can be done by your admin. And we did that really quite successfully. And it does leverage the agents so the agents can continue to be out there following up, which is going to be the next conversation, which is really where they get the transactions. But we need to be communicating with our sphere and our database a lot. The, the last thing that I would say is how can they hold them accountable? I've actually had, you know, admin pull two names with cell phone numbers, uh, you know, from the database every day and stick it in their leader's calendar as a calendar invite the times that the leader has said it's going to work for them. And so it's a calendar invite. It says, call Haley. And in the calendar invite under the location is the cell phone number. So it doesn't matter if the agent is in the office, at the home office or on the road. It's going to make it so much easier for them to just click their calendar, click the phone number and make the call and I've had people have massive success with that. Part of the reason agents don't call anybody is because they don't prepare and they don't know who to call. So if mm -hmm. the admin can be the preparation and can help tell them who to call, usually they will. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to, that's, that's, I was going to say that is that's one of the best ways that, that an admin can help is I love that, like putting it right on the calendar. There's no thought to it. If it's a bigger list, like it's pulling the list and saying, this is who you're calling. This is who they are. You know, you're calling to say happy birthday. You're calling to say happy home anniversary. You're just calling to check in. So the agent really, you know, they still need to, you know, ideally pull it up and, and look at some information, but if they can't, they've at least got something and they know exactly who they're going to call. And I know we probably want to roll on, you know, keep rolling because we could probably sit on this topic <laughs> forever all day. But like yep. you said, Carrie, so that, that does it, roll into follow-up. Yeah. Yeah, it absolutely does. So then the next thing is, let's say that, so you have your admin, they have gotten, they, they're helping you with lead generation, holding you accountable. You set the appointment or they set the appointment for you. Now you're, now what? Like now what's the next step? Or what happens when you do follow up with somebody um, through your lead generation, and they're still not ready to buy or sell, but they have given you permission to continue to follow up with them. What does that follow up look like? What should it look like? Because 
if you tell me, Joel, if you tell me I'm going to follow up with you next quarter, guess what? You got to follow up with me next quarter. How are we going to make that happen? We need to ensure that every single lead that you speak to or every lead, any lead that you have, they're in your CRM and they absolutely need to be on the bare minimum, a quarterly call. If nothing else, they're on a quarterly call. Are you putting them on the quarterly call or can your admin do that for you? That's a system and a process that you'll want to determine on your, you know, within your team. But let's say every single person is on a quarterly call. Okay. Now what, what do you do? Olivia, how do your, how do you, or have you in the past ensured that your CRM is updated and that every single person is on some kind of a follow-up plan? So there's a, a few ways. Part of our transaction plan is that at the end of a transaction, the address is updated and they're put on, you know, home anniversary plan and the agent has a task to put them on a follow-up plan. Um, an easy thing you can do if you go into CRM, most of them will have a way to check who doesn't have a task assigned or when's the last time that someone was contacted. So you can kind of pull that up and we've done this and sort of pull up and go, okay, here's, you know, hey agent, like you've got these people are in here and there's no tasks. Um, and we've said to the team and, and we've done this too, if somebody has no tasks and you haven't contacted them in six months, you know, they're going into the lead pool, they're mm -hmm. fair game. And then any agent who wants to grab that person and call them can. So there's accountability in that if you're not following up with somebody, somebody else will, our ISA will grab them back. And then if they set an appointment, now you're paying them a percentage because you didn't follow up and the ISA did. So it's having something in place and what that's going to be is going to depend on your size and your volume and how many people are in your database. So there's not one right answer to how this works. Mm -hmm. The key is that somebody is responsible for checking and watching because people are going to get lost in there, right? Like yeah. we are all human beings, you know, we're all, you know, you guys are moving quickly and people are going to get missed. People are going to not get put on a plan. You're going to think you made a task and you didn't. So there's got to be somebody who's checking. Are there people in there that don't have tasks set? Are there people we haven't talked to in more than six months? You know, are there people who aren't on listing alerts or market reports? So just having a system in place for checking that, I think is the key because you can have a plan in place to make sure that they're on and things will get missed. So you want to make yes. sure you're checking it on the back end. Yeah. Any anything else that you would add to that, Carrie? Not necessarily. Um, I just think follow up is key. So you got to figure out how you and somebody's going to help you make sure that you know you can divide and conquer and make that happen because 85, 90% of your transactions will come from follow, follow up, not the initial lead generation. So uh, a system for when you get a lead, how does it get entered into the database and what happens to it and what campaigns and, you know, all of those things are important. So what is that cadence of communication between you and your admin to make sure that they can get that input for you potentially, or that, you know, you put them in and they go back in there and, and, and every day look to, to new leads and, and, um, you know, put them on campaigns for you, et cetera, you know, that brings us into the database cleanup because a lot of times, you know, we aren't communicating with everybody because we don't have all the information. And sometimes operations people can go on Facebook and find birthdays and put them into um, the database. They can uh, help by sending text messages or making calls to get contact information updates. And, you know, so when you've already been in real estate for a while and then you bring in an operations person, that sometimes is one of the first things I tell people to do because likely because you haven't had the leverage, your database is a little bit of a mess <laughs> and you don't have all the things that you need. And so that would be a great first place for the administrative person to introduce themselves to your database, get updated information, get it all accurate, and then together go in there and tag them appropriately and get them on the right campaigns or actually create a campaign because maybe you don't even have one yet. Um, and that's like, honestly, I tell people, if you are investing in an administrative person, um, you have to bring it back to your growth. 
because then you are going to reap the benefit and justify the money being spent. It's like holding your money accountable. You have to, as a business person, your administrative person can make you money if you lead them correctly and get them involved in the right tasks. When you are new to this, they have to be focusing on things that are going to get you more business. So calculate their annual salary, their monthly pay, however you're paying them. How many sales do you need to do to basically pay for their salary in addition to what you're doing today? Is it three, five, 10? How together are you going to make that happen? But it makes you then more accountable to getting them involved in your database, getting them involved in lead gen and follow-up. If you don't ask them to do these things, you guys, and you don't leverage this out, then you're not going to get a result. And it's usually not that the administrative person doesn't want to do it. It's usually that you're not giving them the direction or relinquishing control because you're too worried about having somebody do this for you. And those are two things you have to move past if you want to get an ROI on this hire. Yeah, that's a really good point. And the thing too, is that if you are concerned about your admin reaching out on your behalf, they don't necessarily have to talk to your leads. That That's not necessary. I always recommend that our agents call and they're the ones that are doing the quarterly calls. That absolutely should be you because you need to be the ones who are building the trust and confidence. However, your admin can absolutely help to ensure that everybody is in your CRM, that everybody is on some kind of a workflow or auto plan. Like I said, at the bare minimum, it should be a quarterly call. And that leads us into the next thing, which is the database scrub. October is the ideal time to do a database scrub. You know why? Because the holidays are coming up and it's a great time to be reaching out to every single person who is in your database. And when you are doing the database scrub, the, the things that you need to be asking your, your leads and specifically your sphere of influence, you need to be making sure that their address is updated. That they have a that you have their correct email, their phone number is correct, and where are they in the buying process, the buying or selling process? Where are they? And in, at that point, I would rank them. Um, I mean, you could you could use an Excel sheet, you can use your database. And I'm sorry, you might hear my dog yelling at a lizard in the background; she's barking. Um, but you could you like I would use some kind of a tracking process to determine are they 12 months out. Are they six months out or are they three months out? And then additionally, where are they at in getting qualified? Are they paying cash? Are they still thinking about paying cash? Do they need to get uh, a loan and financed and talk to a, a mortgage professional, not just a lender, but a professional? And have you made that introduction yet? These are things that every single person who's in your database, they should be on some kind of a timeline so that your admin could help hold you accountable for reaching out to them if they're warm or if they're cold, warm, hot, or are they ready to buy today, buy or sell today? Your admin can help hold you accountable. Anything else that you would add to the database scrub, Olivia or Carrie? I think that you, um, you know, you really hit it. Um, one quick thing that kind of goes in with, with this and, and with the piece before that is making sure that admin, your admin understands how to know what a rhythm of follow-up should be and how to classify people. Because one thing I've seen a lot is they say, you know, people ask, you know, their admin to go in and, and clean the database and they don't know how to classify people. They don't know who they are, like who's the most important. And to some degree, they're not going to be able to do some of it. Um, some of that is, is because you're going to know them better. But there's, they can understand like, okay, if this is a past client, you know, if this is a sphere, you know, different ways that they can know how to classify people, they're not going to know how to do it. And, and everyone's going to have their own way of these are the most important people for me. So just making sure to take the time to make sure that what's in your head about your database gets into their head as much as possible. Because just remember, like with everything else, these are your people, you put them in, you know who they are to the admin, these are just names. So help them become more than just that. And additionally, before we get on to the fourth uh, thing that they could be having or helping you with, I would also advise that you have some kind of a category to identify like who's in your top 20%, mm. who's in your top 20, 
that these are the people who provide you with the most referrals. They've done the most, the most business for you. These are your super fans. Who is in your top 20%? Are they classified as number ones? Or are you going to use like an alphabetical system, ABC? Because as we prepare for the end of the year, a lot of agents, large teams, companies, we like to do holiday events, right? And we want to make sure that we are including in those invitations our top 20%. So as you're doing your database scrub, I would tag every single person who's in my top 20. I'd actually create a tag that says top 20%. And I would tag them with that tag because then next year when the holidays come around again, you're going to want to make sure that those top 20%, that they are invited to every event that you do, whether it's a holiday event, whether it's a um, just a client appreciation event, um, a wine mixer, uh, whatever it is that you're doing, we're always including our top 20. So, and this is how, I mean, this is a referral-based business right here. If you continue to do this and you do it right, and it's purposefully and intentional, the first step is to make sure that every single person who's in your top 20 is tagged and that your admin knows who your top 20 is. One quick note on that, and that's, um, you know, a great point with the top 20%. And this is, I, I sell you this from a mistake that we made. Um, when you figure out like who becomes the top 20, um, make sure it stays around 20%. Because sometimes you'll just kind of keep adding like, okay, this person should be top 20%. This person should be top 20%. And if you're not keeping track of it, your 20%, 20 goes to 50%. Right. You're like 30%, 40%, you know? Yeah. And so just every once in a while, and this is kind of can be part of that database scrub is look at who is my mm -hmm. top 20%. Is it actually roughly 20%? You know, is it, are there people who are in my top 20% who actually haven't sent me business in five years? Yeah. Right. They, they were my top 20%, but we stopped sending business to them. They don't send business to us. They're not actually our top 20% anymore. So that's something just, it's not static. Just because somebody goes into your top 20% doesn't mean they stay in your top 20%. Yeah. That's a really good point. Let's dive into the number four, which is holiday events. So these can, like events in general can be an entire um, client acquisition strategy. Like this could be one that you own and that you're very purposeful and intentional about. And I know teams all over the nation who use events, only events, and they get lots of business this way. Um, but holiday events are really special. There's a lot of emotion attached to these and they can be something really small, or they can be really big, depending on what your budget is. But having someone help leverage you with this, ensuring that the list of your 20%, your vendors, um, family, friends, planning this whole event and allowing you to cast the vision for the event, they ask you questions to make sure that it's organized. Are we being purposeful? Are we thinking of everything? Ensuring that things are sticking to budget. Having that person help you with this is, is, is very crucial. And it can go from, you know, hosting an event where you get no referrals and no follow-up to having an event where every person who attended that event is now providing you with a testimony, providing you with a referral, and you have built a reputation and trust and rapport because you have someone helping you and leveraging you. And they're thinking about the event in a strategic way that maybe you just didn't even consider. And that doesn't mean that you're wrong or that there's something wrong with you. No, it just means that you're the visionary. And, and as force multipliers, we want you to show up and execute and be at the highest level and not have to worry about anything else. And we want everyone to leave this event having a great time and remembering that you you did this, you created this space, you provided emotional capital for each one of your clients and they're going to remember to come back next year. And one other thing on, on events, you know, is that part of the power of events is it doesn't, the people who don't go still get touched, right? So you invite 
you know, let's say you invite 150 people and 75 show up. You haven't missed that other 75 because you reached out to invite them. You probably reached out to follow up, you know, see if they were coming, if they hadn't gotten back to you. Now you take pictures at the event, right? And then you send something out afterward and you say like, hey, here's some pictures from our event. Here's how the event went. Maybe you raised money for something. And then, so you can have touches that touch these other people so that the event is a, just a success for the people who are there. So that's just a, another thing to keep in mind with events is that, you know, obviously you want a good turnout at your event and the people who aren't there are still people you can follow up with like, hey, we're sorry we missed you at this event. We're sorry you couldn't make it. We wanted to share some pictures from the event. It was a lot of fun. We hope to see you at our next one. Yes, absolutely. And the other thing too is that events especially around the holidays, they don't have to be, you know, ex this like elaborate thing that costs all this money. Remember, you can get it sponsored. If you're worried about a finance, like a budget, get a sponsor, right? Use a vendor or team up with another EXP team in your state and, and host it together. Do it together. Um, you know, we've got Thanksgiving coming up. So, Pie giveaways are always a big hit. We've got, um, oh yeah, Olivia has a gift wrapping event. So people can bring in a toy to donate and you can wrap it all together, right? Toy drives, um, clothing drives are great. They mm -hmm. are fantastic. We've done a bunch of those where you, you can have a collection out for a month, right? You can be collecting items. And then the last day, Maybe you have uh, one thing we did was we had, you know, clothing drive for about a month and then we had Santa photos the last day. Right. And, you know, so it different ways to think about it. You can use it to to give back. At the same time, there's it can be a small event, too. It doesn't have to be a big event. It can be something small. Yeah, um, it can be other... something that's part of something that's already going on. Yeah, 100 percent or. Think about this too. We've done in the past where we've had open houses and we did like a jacket drive for open at our open house. So we would like farm the community before we would let them know, Hey, we're having an open house on this day and this time. We would love for you not only to drop, to stop by, but we're also collecting jackets for children between the ages of this and this, we would love for you to bring a jacket, right? So that's one thing or a food donation. Um, so you're farming, you're making a, a impact on the community and you're doing an open house. It's like killing a bird with three stones. Um, it's killing three birds with one stone, three stone. Yes. Three birds with one three stone. Birds, sorry. One stone. Don't kill birds. <laughs> birds Don't lovely. kill birds. Okay. Yes. Let's move on. Um, so th there's just, there's also a lot of events that you can have people call in to you so that you're not going out and, um, and doing something, you can like do some kind of a drive where people are calling into you and they win a prize. I, I saw this um, with a team about two years ago where they did like a Christmas tree drive and they went and they purchased 50 Christmas trees. And then the first 50 clients that called in, they would donate the, the Christmas tree to their home. So I thought that that was really cool because now you're getting people to call you and you're delivering the tree. So I just thought that that was really neat. So there's some ideas there, but where the admin could really come in and support you here is ensuring that every single person is reached out to who needs to be invited and are people leaving a review or a testimony for you? Are you asking for a referral? Like, how are you tracking the people that show up and are they on some kind of communication plan after they come? I mean, think of all of the holidays that we have. The biggest one, I think that's like the most family oriented besides like a, a Christmas one would be like Easter. And I've seen teams, you know, host a huge Easter event. And there were like hundreds of people there with all their kids, but nobody thought to record like who checked in. And I was like, holy shit, like you guys just lost all of that all of the people, every single person that walked in through the door, you didn't ask them for their name or their email or like where they, how they got invited to this. And they were like, oh, I didn't think about that. 
So that was just like a huge opportunity wasted because they didn't have someone think to record who was coming in. So having an admin or somebody in that position who can just be thinking of those one little extra thing can really make a big difference. Awesome. So we've talked about events. Well, we've talked about lead generation. We've talked about follow-up and making sure that everybody is on some kind of plan, an auto plan, a workflow, whatever you call it, a drip campaign in your CRM. We talked about a database scrub and holidays. So the fifth thing I want to talk about is prepping for taxes. And that's like the terrible T word that no one likes to talk about, but having somebody help prep for taxes. Now they're not a CPA. They're not going to do your taxes for you, but can they keep things organized for you throughout the year? Absolutely. Probably in your email, right? Every single time that you're paying for something, do you have an accountant? What does your accountant need for the end of the year? Can they just be that communication going back and forth between your CPA or your accountant? Do, do, is there anything that you're missing? Are they just keeping things organized for you? So again, all you need to show, you just need to show up and you just need to sign, sign on the dotted line, sign away, sign away 50% of your income, right? But Olivia or Carrie, do you guys have any experience like working with your PL um, or how it's benefited you having somebody work alongside you to make sure you get this organized? Yeah. So we, you know, over the years, like there was a while where I, I did the PL. Um, and then as we grew, we have an accountant who does it and I would keep a binder throughout the year. Um, now I just save it in, in emails and, um, but, you know, just keeping a binder and, and getting with the accountant and say, okay, what are you going to need at the end of the year? Um, and, you know, making sure that we have that for them, making sure that, you know, reaching out and say, what do I need to have in place? Um, for this, um, if you have a bookkeeper, it can be the person who's that liaison with the bookkeeper. So anytime there's a receipt that gets sent over to the bookkeeper, if there's a question on an expense, the bookkeeper can come to them with that. Um, I think there's a huge benefit in your admin knowing and understanding your P&L. Um, obviously depends where they are in their journey with you, but I really think there's a huge benefit on one hand because they can help with these things and on the other, they will understand your business better. They will understand where the money is coming in and where it is going, because I think it's easy if you don't understand that to just see the money coming in and think, wow, like, you know, they're making so much money. And then you start to break down. Yeah. And we're paying this and we're paying this and here's our cost of sale and here's what this costs. And then here's the bottom line. So it's kind of a side note, but I think there's a really, really huge benefit to going through that PL with your admin so they can understand the business. Yeah. Carrie, you're nodding your head. Do you agree? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if I could say anything different. I think it, what you need to note is if it's a new position, it may not be appropriate to do it right away. But if you start with the end in mind, I think ultimately if this person is going to be a full time operations partner, that eventually becomes a really good. Uh, place for them to also contribute and add value for all the reasons that Olivia shared for sure. Perfect. Perfect. So, you know, if you guys are like the one, the one thing that I would leave you with is if you don't currently have at least a CPA or some kind of an accountant to help you prep for taxes, mm -hmm. just do your, you know, do your due diligence and look into that because you're not meant to do everything alone. And as an entrepreneur and a business owner, it can become very overwhelming to look at all of the income that you've made. What are, what can you write off? Um, I mean, we, you know, there are just so many things that we just, I mean, mm -hmm. we're just not experts in this. Allow the expert, the CPA or the accountant to help you with this. And there are some really, really great resources out there that are affordable. Um, so with the bare minimum, I would definitely recommend having those conversations. Um, the sixth thing that we would recommend your admin really helping you focus on as we enter in the fourth quarter is reviewing all of your transaction plans. So do you currently have a checklist, like a transaction checklist? 
Do you currently have um, a workflow or a campaign? When someone gets under contract, what does that look like for you? Mm -hmm. What is the system and the process? What are you doing before you send everything to SkySlope? Do you have a transaction coordinator? If not, and you're doing this all on your own, this is in an area that you could definitely optimize by having not just a transaction coordinator, but an admin come in and review those auto plans or those checklists to ensure that you are providing five-star customer service mm -hmm. from the moment that you have a lead come in to the time that you meet them out at the house the very first time to making sure that your, um, your buyer consultation, your listing consultation, that those are not just meeting standard, but they are meeting and exceeding all expectations. And then what does it look like when someone gets under contract? Who is communicating with who? And then when the transaction closes, what is the post-close plan look like? Because that is just as important as that initial follow-up. We want to make sure that every single person in our CRM is on a neighborhood market report that they are getting, that they're going to be put on some kind of a quarterly mm -hmm. campaign where you're reaching out to them every quarter, that they're getting a monthly communication from us, and that we want them to leave a review. So mm -hmm. asking for reviews, all of those things are so incredibly important. And then at the very end, we also want to just touch base. And yes, we want to ask for a review, but we also want to ask, is there anyone else who you know, who would, uh, who we can bring value to by being a professional resource? Is there anyone else that you might know who could benefit from talking to a professional realtor? Mm -hmm. Making sure that that is in the auto plan and that you're making that phone call, it can be a game changer for you. One thing you can throw in too that um, is that check-in after is fantastic. You can throw in a check-in partway through because if you just do the check-in at the end and they give you some feedback on what you could have done better, there's nothing you can do to go back and make their experience better. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good point, Olivia. If you do the check-in in the middle and they say, well, you know, mostly things are great. You know, I wish I could be, you know, I'm, I'm getting emails when I really wish I was getting texts or I'm getting texts when I want emails that sort of thing that allows you to adjust mid course. And then at the end, when you ask for that referral, you know, say, you know, I hope that, you know, we were able to provide that top level of service that you would want to recommend yes. to your friends. So just something you can throw in, in the middle to, to update that. And even saying something at the front end, our intention is to provide the highest level of service so that you will want you, you will ask us, to call your friends, you know, mm -hmm. and if we're not providing mm -hmm. that level of service, I want you to tell me so that we can make sure that we are. Mm -hmm. So these are also steps that can be thrown into your transaction plan. They can be, those can be, that can be something that you do that can, depending on volume, that can become an automated email that goes mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. from you. Or your without transaction. You doing anything. Yeah. We've had in the past, um, even our transaction coordinator reach out to check in or mm -hmm. Um, a list, your listing manager, whatever that looks like. But I love that, Olivia, having, you know, the opportunity to ask for feedback in the middle so that they can see so that if they do provide you with constructive, constructive feedback, you are able to pivot and start meeting their expectations again. I mean, what an amazing, of course, they would want to refer you. Now you, they have seen firsthand that you're able to pivot, right? And open that. feedback. And right? open to like feedback. The everything being perfect is great, and things are generally not perfect. Mm -hmm. So being able to to move on that, but you have to check in because most people are way too nice to say anything. Yeah, and being nice is not always being kind. Mm. Right. So. We are at uh, the 45 mark. I want to just point out one more thing and then we'll open it up to questions or ahas. So the seventh thing that Olivia and I recommend is that your admin can do 
is to help you plan for next year. So they should be asking you, what are your goals for next year? And what are the strategies that we need to start implementing to ensure that you get there? That is, that is them being a leader and holding you accountable. But what else does that look like, Olivia? Um, have you had these conversations with your leader and how do they typically go? So it, what it looks like is sitting down and what is your budget? Like, what is your goal for the next year? And that includes, you know, how many units are we going to sell? And then what's our price point and what's our average commission, which means our projected income is X. And then what's our budget based on that? And I highly recommend budgeting for less than your projected income. Um, worst, you know, best case, you know, you have extra money. If mm -hmm. you come in a little under, then you're going to be in trouble, but it's setting up that budget. It's setting up what are the priorities? So going into next year, what are your goals outside of selling X number? Is it to increase referrals? Is it to get more market share in a certain area? Is it to have better events? What is the goal and how are you focused on that? So you're not just going into the next year going like, all right, let's work really hard. It's going in with a plan. Like, okay, we're gonna make sure that our touch plan is on point. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna make sure that, you know, we've got our events planned out, you know, for, you know, at least half a year in advance. So it's having that planning in place and it can be like really thorough or it can be a little, a little more broad, but it's having an idea of going in like, okay, this is what we're expecting to do. This is how we're expecting to do it. And these are the steps we need to take as opposed to like next year, we're gonna sell 300 houses. How? We're gonna work really hard. Yeah, you might, but nobody knows where you're going. So <laughs> and that's something to do, not just that they can help you with as far as pulling things together, but also get their input, mm -hmm. right? Talk to them. If they've been with you a while, if they know that group, they're going to have ideas that you're not going to have. They're going to have, they might have strategies that you don't have. And you might think, hey, let's go in this direction. And they say, well, what about this? So bring them into that conversation to make them really a partner in this conversation so that they own it because then they will help drive it. Yeah. And especially if you're casting the vision and we talked about this yesterday, just how important that is when an admin understands how, like where they are going, mm -hmm. they can, it provides autonomy and it provides confidence and having those two things, when you already have someone who's a driver, now they know how to execute. Now they know what to expect and they know what you want. You're just telling them, here's the end goal. This is what I'm looking for. And now if you are casting the vision clearly, which is honestly one of your number one goals as a leader is to cast the vision. When you're able to do that, not just your admin, but everyone on your team, now they can be behind you. Now they like fully understand what, like what the destination is. So we can all get there, right? Love that. Anything else, Carrie, that you would add, or I'd like to open it up for any like ahas. Joel, are you, you know, more interested in like having this leverage now? Hi, um, uh, everyone. Uh -oh. Oh. Sorry, good. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Sean. Go ahead, Joel. Oh, I was just saying, um, definitely interested in getting one. Um, I just got to figure out exactly what I want them to do and how it's going to play in, but it's good to know what they do. Cause I had no clue. Um, cause I just heard like admin thrown around and then VA and then TC and it's just like, I got all of them confused. So it's definitely good to know what they, what they. Yeah. It's alphabet soup. Um, don't worry about the title, worry about what you need. You know, once mm -hmm. you work, you figure out what you need in your business and then hire the person for that role because people need different things. Some people are really strong at marketing and they need someone to come in, you know, on another thing. Some you know, people have different strengths, whatever your strengths are, whatever is sort of missing or the things you really don't want to do. That's what your admin can do. There isn't 
one admin role. Yeah. Well said. Anybody else? Yes. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. Um, yeah, I'm going to turn on my video. Um, I'm actually a VA. I'm attending this meeting for my um, client. And I've, I'm learning so much from you guys. So I'm so glad that she allowed me to join this one. Um, she just can't make it. So I, I just have a few questions. Um, my first question is, can we go back to the scrubbing of the database? Um, I, I'm just not sure if I missed um, your explanation, but it's about um, how are we going to identify the 20% that you mentioned? Sure. Olivia, do you want to take a stab at that? And then I'll fill in anything that might be missed. Sure. I, so that, and it, it, it's one of the frustrating things is that there are not solid answers to most of these questions. So your top 20% is going to include the people that you do a lot of business with. So you're going to have you know, repeat clients, um, depending on how many people, it could be past clients, but not every past client is going to be top 20%. Um, certainly if you've got investors, it's going to be allied resources um, or people in your world that send you business. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be, you know, maybe people who really could send you business, but don't, and you really want to kind of wine and dine them a little bit. It's those people who are going to help you grow your business. So it's not just people you've done business with and you like them. You can certainly follow up with them and all of those things. Maybe they become top 20%, mm -hmm. but your top 20% are really the people that by staying in touch with them, you're reminding them to send you business because they are people who send you business or who mm -hmm. have said, I'm definitely going to send you business or just in some way help grow your, your world. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for that. And I would just like to add because um, just to give you an insight, because um, Joel mentioned that um, he's planning to get um, a VA, but he's not sure, you know, the, the task or what are the things that his future VA will be doing. So I would agree to what Olivia said that it every at um, every VA or every admin assistant has. Um, his or her strength and weaknesses, but that weaknesses can be addressed because there are so many um, training centers online that anyone can attend to. Um, say, for example, if we can go back to number six, the reviewing of transaction plans. Um, as a VA, I do lead generating, but um, to maximize um, my role and my purpose for, for my client, then I also attend um, trainings for bookkeeping so that if I'm done with you know um, generating leads or making calls, then I can also maximize my time in doing bookkeeping tasks. Um, also with the planning of events, there are so many things that you know um, an assistant can do so I would agree to Olivia that um, every admin has um, strength but weaknesses can also you can also turn it into strength by what um, Haley mentioned by helping um, your assistant or your admin um, be more confident because you are communicating everything well um, to him or her so um, your so you know the admin will you will bring out the best in you know in his or herself and will be serving its per his or her purpose um in your team or with you alone as a client because for example I know that uh, my client is very busy so I always ask her every start of the day or even by the end of the shift um mm -hmm. What are the things that, that um, you want me to do uh, for the next day, for the next week, so that I can prepare? And then I will do, um, or I will create a to-do list so that I will not miss it. And so I can complete it in a timely manner as well, which is very important. An efficient admin is such a big help for clients like you guys. So um, that's it. I hope that that would help you guys. Um, 
get um, a VA or choose a VA in the future. That's so awesome. I'm so mm -hmm. incredibly thankful that you brought that up because um, and I think it just really shows that there are VAs and assistants and admins who what helps them thrive and feel fulfilled is to lead each and every one of you. And when you are successful, they feel successful. That yeah. fills our cup. When we can see someone else thriving because of the work that we're doing in the back end, that is like the most exciting thing for us because, yeah. and that's just filling our cup. So a really good assistant or an admin or force multiplier, like I told you in the beginning, they are leading you by asking you those powerful questions. What more can I do? What more, how else can I add value to you? They're asking yeah. for feedback and they're giving you feedback as the agent of how they need to be led. They're communicating that with you. Mm -hmm. I think that that's so incredibly powerful. Thank you so much for sharing. You're welcome. And also, um, since you mentioned um, at the start of this meeting that um, there are some of you guys that don't have um, uh, an admin assistant yet. Um, what works for me, just to share for me and my client, is that um, we're being we have an honest uh, relationship. That if I don't know anything, I always ask her, and that um, I always also give her a feedback that because she's also new to to having an assistant. So she's also like um, cramming about and, you know, organizing things. Mm -hmm. What are the tasks that she should assign to me? So I also help her in the sense of that um, by asking her, um, what exactly do you need me to do for today, for tomorrow, for next week? And then she will just explain things to me like she's un somehow unsure. So I help yeah. her, I help her um, identify um, clearly what she needs. Yeah. Yes. What she really needs. And so I help her. Okay. Um, I'll make a research about this because I'm also new to that one. I'll make a research and then um, so I can help you and be effective in doing such tasks. Yeah. Love so that. it's a two way. Okay. It takes two to tango. Yes, it absolutely does. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, please, please, please reach out to me in Workplace or you can reach out to Olivia. She's in Workplace. Um, of course, Carrie. Let us know if you have any questions about what this journey looks like, um, how we can support you. Um, both Olivia and I, we do admin coaching and we do training. We also work with VAs. And um, we, we specifically work with agents who are just new to this relationship so that we can create a solid foundation. So please just reach out to us if you have any questions. And we just appreciate you guys being here. We hope that this was valuable to you. Perfect. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Bye, Joel.